All right, looks like we're live. I'm getting wound up. Good to see you all tonight. Good to have those of you who made it out to our last Wednesday night Bible study of 2021. When we meet again Sunday, Lord willing, it'll be a brand new year. Yeah, it's supposed to be cold, but it's supposed to warm up to 50 again on Monday, so. Yeah, yeah, it'll do that to us for sure. Uh, I guess next week we'll start our regular Wednesday night schedule back again. The meal will be at 5.45. Uh, Walnut Clubs will start at 6.15, our Bible study, and the, uh, Brother Joel's Bible study will be at the same time, 6.30. Uh, remember our uh, Sunday afternoon and evening activities? The 9th of January is the Haitian school offerings. If you donate to a student, to support a student. And then 31st of January is Youth Sunday. And that'll also be last Sunday lunch. We missed that a couple of times. But it wasn't like we didn't eat. <laughs> I'm still regretting part of that. But anyway, I'd probably do the same thing all over again. Good day Sunday. The Lord was here. And anytime we get together in his house and we feel his presence, we know we've accomplished our purpose for having come. All right, let's uh, look at our prayer list together, if you will. If you don't have a copy of it, there's some out there. have several I want to update and uh, some that we're going to add to the prayer list as we go tonight. Excuse me, if I miss someone, well, you be sure and tell me, please. Uh... I'm going to start at the top of the list and work my way down. Pray for our law enforcement. Pray for Brother Charlie Washington. Keep praying for Lonnie. Any late, late update on Lonnie? He goes to the doctor tomorrow for his 547. Okay. All right. Uh, keep praying for Kirk Wood, the Wood family. Uh, I told you all that he had taken some steps with just very little assistance. And that was just almost, that was a miracle based on what the doctors had said. Last report I got on Summer Draper is that she was doing good. Uh, keep praying for Carolyn Odom. There's been kind of a bug going around and a lot of people in our church have had it. Uh, Al and Carolyn both had it and Carolyn's taking a little longer to get over it than Al is. But uh, pray for her. Charlie Morton walked with a walker today unassisted. And they moved him to another room, and they're going to be working him really hard in rehab. And Jarita was uh, happy to report that. Uh, my friends, Jonelle and Austin Crawley, some of you know them, some of you don't. But I talked to Austin today, and he hurt his back, and she's pretty much down, and he can't lift her. And it's, it's just not pretty for either one of them, but y'all pray for them. Uh, we were praying for Delisa Key's mother, Shermana Philpott. She is released from the hospital. Last report I read, she has to stay a couple of days to do some follow-up appointments, and then be headed back to uh, Asylum Springs. Uh, Turtle, Brooklyn Shreve had her surgery today. Everything went well. They didn't have to do as much to her knee. There wasn't as much damage as they had anticipated. So we're thankful for that. Uh, I have my appointment for a stress test on the 14th of January. So uh, appreciate your prayers. Andy Newbill, who's a Methodist minister who used to serve in this area. He's been battling cancer. Sure, uh, Sharon asked us to pray for him. Jackie Hewlett, still praying for him. Uh, Heather Keenan is home. Still is going to have to have some uh, infusion treatments. I mentioned Brother Norcellus. Uh, he is still in the States. He's looking well, but I haven't got an update on his health. I just know he had to go back to some more doctors to try to find out something that was going on. Uh, Shirley Spears asked us to pray for her granddaughter, Madison, and then she tagged that post three of the littles. I'm assuming that's Madison's kids. I don't know, but anyway, they've got COVID going through their family. Pray for Amy and Kinley. They both have the same bug and Texted with Amy today, and she said they're still still battling it, but uh, pray for them. Uh, Sharon Barnes has got uh, stomach flu that's going around. Uh, Becky's brother, Jerry Humphreys, we've had him on our prayer list off and on. And Becky heard from her sister-in-law today, and he's going into a nursing home tomorrow. He's just got to where he's non-ambulatory. 
So if you will, pray for them. Uh, Josh Barnes. Josh, uh, oh, was that Christmas Day? That was Thursday. Okay. All right. He took a fall playing basketball and broke his arm. How many places, Dool? Good night. Anyway. Okay. Right now his surgery is scheduled for the 5th of January. Keep praying for Donna Spear. Did I mention Jaquita Curry? Jaquita <laughs> fell and broke both of her wrists. Saw that. I saw that on Facebook. So we need to pray for her. My cousin, Billy Wilson. Uh, my aunt asked us to keep praying for him. Tom Fight is on our prayer list. Tom's been in the hospital and, and was battling it. Uh, last I heard he was doing better, but uh, keep praying for him. And then we have an unspoken re request in our family. So is there somebody I might have missed that you, you know of? Yeah, thank you. Mike's mother. Thank you. And then uh, Joe Collins. I don't know who put him on there. And then, um, oh, I can't think. Ron uh, Beebe. I can't think. Uh, I can't think who put them on there, but they probably have the church. Okay. Uh, keep praying for Donna. I know Donna's battling. She's taking treatments as is. When's your next one, Vicki? When's your next treatment? Every day. Every day? <laughs> All right. Well, you remember these people. My goodness. Uh, who else? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. What's the name again? Okay. Did you get that, Miss Sue? Okay, thank you. Anyone else with a prayer request? I see several people, including family members, are watching. Good to see you, Aunt Virginia. You may really be my cousin, but you've always been Aunt Virginia. <coughs> Anyone else? All right. All minds clear. Pray for Sunday services. Pray for your pastors. We need it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Pray over these. If you have prayer requests, please send them to us via a message, and we will add them to our prayer list. Uh, I saw somebody else. Dana Horn, third row, a little bit further down. Uh, I think you can take Johnny Hawkins off. Okay. He's at home doing all right. Just having to do a little bit of home rehab. That enough? Thank you all. Let's bow together and pray over these, please. Be to lead our prayer for us, would you please? 
Thank you. We're going to Romans chapter 8 again tonight, and you have a new outline. If you didn't get one, I think they're close to Becky there, or somebody has them. We, uh, we covered verse 18. We kind of separated it, but we're going to start there again because it springboards us into what's going to follow. And tonight we're going we're gonna to read down through verse number 27. And as we go further into the chapter, we get closer to parts of the chapter that uh, 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 we love so much. I just noticed a message that I forgot to mention. Uh, Marie Roy, she's on our prayer list. You keep praying for Marie. Okay. Uh, verse 18, we, we covered it. And I'll just go ahead and read it. He said, I reckon that the sufferings of the present are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And as we closed out this study last time, I can't remember. It was, I guess it would have been two weeks ago tonight because we had the pastor's Christmas fellowship last Wednesday night. But we closed out reminding ourselves that while we're here on this earth, we're not home yet. All right, This world is not our home. We have another home waiting us. So while we wait to be delivered from this world, we need to be reminded, and that's what Paul is reminding us of in these verses that we're going to read, that the world we live in is under a curse. It began in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And because of that curse and the results of that curse, there's a lot of turmoil that takes place in our world. I always get amazed at the number of so-called preachers who believe that this world is just going to keep getting better and better. It's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible teaches at all. It's not what the Bible teaches relative to God's children. In this world, you'll have trouble. That's just a promise. That's a fact. You've just stated right out there in, in that way. You might as well get ready for it. You might as well accept it. And, and a lot of us have lived our lives at least up to a point shielded from great problems. And then when problems came, we didn't know what to do because we'd had it so good and so easy for so long. So with that backdrop in mind, we're reminded that with all the trouble, turmoil in this world that leads to this word we're going to talk about tonight, groaning, all right? Uh, a lot of God's people become discouraged. I heard a great sermon at a, at a minister's conference several years ago. Becky accompanied me there. It was up in Branson. And this guy preached to us preachers. And the sermon was about discouragement. And I've preached it many times since then, both here and in revivals. And I think discouragement is probably, he said it, and I believe it, it's the number one sin in ministry. And it's so easy to become discouraged. And, and I have known children of God who've looked at the circumstances in their life, in the world, in the trouble and turmoils of the world, and they became discouraged. And you know some of them, and I know many of them, they just quit. They just walked away from God. I remember hearing a guy say, and he said it verbally to my face. He said, I had it a lot better before I started trying to live for Jesus. And, and he, just, he just didn't get it. When, when he was a sinner, you know, the devil wasn't after him. The devil wasn't pursuing him. But once he became a child of God, he found out about turmoil and trial and tribulation. And he just never grew strong enough 
to learn how to lean on God through it. So that next paragraph, and, and you've got pretty much what I've got in my notes. There's a, there's, there's a word that, that we want to bring out, and in in the word is diligence. And I looked that up. Diligence means to be characterized by steady, earnest, and energetic activity. <laughs> and I thought about that compared to a lot of Baptists I've known for the last 60 some odd years. And it doesn't describe a lot of Baptists that I know. I'm not talking about you necessarily. Now, if it offends you, then maybe you need to come to the altar, all right? But uh, steady, earnest, energetic activity. I think you could say that's the opposite of just giving up and throwing up your hands and saying, I can't do this anymore. So this passage is going to deal with the struggles that are going on in the world around us. And we're going to look at them in three different categories. We're going to look at a word that comes up, and the word is groaning. And we're going to see it more than one time in this passage. So we've already read verse 18. So let's start in verse 19 of Romans chapter number 8. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subject, subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also, also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, Waiting, remember that term adoption? Waiting for the adoption. That, that phrase to wit means that is the redemption of our bodies. All right? For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Here's that word going to come up again, groaning. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, better translated, I think, himself, makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I want to talk first to my all tonight about the groanings of creation. I want to read verses 19 through 22 again. Follow along in your Bibles, those of you who still have your Bibles open. And this is the Phillips translation of these verses. J.B. Phillips translated the New Testament. He was a great scholar. Translated the New Testament from some original manuscripts that were available. And, 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 and listen to what he says, all right? He says, translating, in my opinion, whatever we may have to go through now is less than nothing compared with the magnificent future God has planned for us. Listen to this phrase. The whole creation is on tiptoe. I like that. The whole creation is on tiptoe to see the wonderful side of the sons of God coming into their own. The world of creation cannot as yet see reality, not because it chooses to be blind, but because in God's purpose it has been so limited. Yet it has been given hope. And the hope that is in that that in the end the whole of created life will be rescued from the tyranny of change and decay and have its share in that magnificent liberty which can only belong to the children of God. It is plain to anyone with eyes to see that at present time, all creation groans in a sort of universal travail. So this word groaning that just keeps coming back up in this particular section, it means to sigh a deep guttural, if you will. I mean, from down deep inside, a, 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 a 
groan, all right? It, it, it to signify groaning under a great burden, under a great weight. And this is the image that he's used, Paul's used to describe creation. And so we, we, we don't think of creation groaning, all right? He says the world groans. He talks about the Holy Spirit. When we make, he makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. But so let's look at creation from this aspect, all right? God created man, the high point of his creation, placed him in the garden, gave him care over the garden. And, and up and until the fall of Adam and Eve, they tended the garden and they worked. They had chores to do, but it was different before the curse, excuse me, than after the curse. Before the curse, they worked, but they didn't sweat. Can you imagine that? I mean, being out on a muggy, hot August day and hauling hay or raking hay, whatever you're doing, and just working as hard as you can and not sweating. He says, he said that's that the sweat came about as a part of the curse. Another part of the curse on, on this world, that was on man, but another part of the curse on this world was before that they tended the garden. They grew things. It was beautiful. It was lovely. But there were no thorns. There were no thistles. There were no weeds. I'm not that great of a farmer, all right? But I would imagine that if you didn't have thorns, thistles, and weeds, would you have to till the soil much to plant? It wouldn't take much. You just go out there and dig up some good dirt and plant it and go on because you didn't have to worry about those things. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Becky said they had more dirt than rocks. Well, we're growing them well at our house, I'll tell you that. So creation came under the, per, the curse, not because it did something wrong, but because Adam and Eve did something wrong. And I always try to include them together. And I'll tell you, the Bible teaches us that Adam had the more judgment because he was not deceived. He was deceived by serpent. Adam just followed the leadership of his wife. I'm not saying, men, that you should never listen to your wives. I know sometimes that God gives our wives guidance and we probably need to listen. I'm not saying we have to do everything they say. It might work better for us sometimes if we did, but that's a lesson for another time, all right? So because Adam chose to walk in rebellion against the command of God, all of creation was placed under this curse. So drop down to verse 22 again. He said, for we, we know that this whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So when we hear groaning and travailing, what does that remind you of? Birth, Birth pains. That's exactly the way some scholars describe this verse, all right? And, uh, well, without going into it, we don't have to talk about it. Everybody probably knows about that, all right? So the results of the curse are plain to see in this world. Uh, deadly earthquakes, uh, deadly animals, poisonous snakes at the time... Man, man had control and reign over all the animals in the creation, uh, poison plants, death, violence, even in the midst of creation's pain. It's still lifting its voice in God to praise for his majesty and glory. And I'm telling you, God created everything and everything in creation, as we've learned earlier in this book, speaks of him, even his eternal power and Godhead. And so the creation, listen, it's waiting and it's groaning and travailing. What for? Because one day Jesus is going to set foot back on this earth again, praise God. And he's going to, he's going to rule and reign on the throne of his father David for a thousand years. This very earth. There will be peace like it's never been since God and Adam walked together. If you wasn't Baptist, you could shout about that. There are some verses that you have in your notes, and you're welcome to read them, but I'm not going to take the time to turn over. When you do, you'll recognize them. Verses 19 and 21, I've, I've planted them together. 
The earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. Verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption under the glorious liberty of the children of God. These verses tell us that creation itself expects to be delivered from the curse placed upon it. This, this, this idea, this expectation, that's where Phillips translated this, that, that the, God's creation is standing on its tiptoes, just looking out over, just waiting, hoping to see it come to pass at any moment, all right? You know, we could sit around and talk about all the bad and all the evil in the world, and it is, and there is much. But I'm telling you, as we look around at God's creation, there's still beauty in it, even amidst a world that's under a curse. I love to be out in nature. I love to be out. I can sit in a boat all day and fish. And I'd like to catch fish. But I can still be relaxed. Sitting there. And working at it. Just in God's creation. I don't do as well sitting while I'm hunting deer. If I don't see deer. Alright. I mean. The mind can only absorb as much as the backside can withstand. Alright. So. Not as good at that, but I still like being out in nature, all right? And you know, if you could sit and imagine the most beautiful sight, as far as nature and creation is concerned, the beautiful, most beautiful sight you've ever seen, I want you to be reminded that that image is still scarred with sin. Imagine what it was like before sin, all right? Becky and I, the first time we went to Las Vegas, we, we were told that it was just a couple of hours to the Grand Canyon. Well, it is the North Rim, but nobody told us about that. So we rented a Geo Metro. I don't recommend that. All right? I'm just saying that's what they had. That's what we took. And we took off, and we drove like three and a half, four hours. We got to Williams, Arizona. And then it's about 59 or 60 miles east till you get to the Grand Canyon. And we'd been to Vegas, and we'd walked through Vegas. We'd seen all the sites. We'd been downtown. We saw the fountains, wherever that is. We saw the people on the streets, and I don't need to go into detail. But, I mean, we saw all the lights. We saw the strip. We saw it all. And we drove up and paid our $25, by the way. is what it cost back then to get into the Grand Canyon. We didn't have a state park pass or a national park pass, so we had to pay $25 to get in. We drove in there and parked, and we walked up, looked off there, and we were in awe. I mean, we were just in awe. And Becky, you want to tell them real loud what you said? No. But I'll say it. She's getting back at me for something. I say She's getting historical, all right? Not hysterical, historical. Becky said, if you drive through Vegas, you saw what man could do. But standing here, you see what God can do. Yeah. And the truth to that, all right? I mean, I think of some of the places that we've been privileged to see in our lifetime. Uh, and, but, but listen, it pales in, in, in comparison to what it's going to be like in the future. I'm telling you, Jesus is going to rule and reign on this earth. One day, this earth will melt away with the fervent heat, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. But God's going to rule. Jesus is going to rule and reign on this one. Creation longs to be free, and God longs to free it. Here's why. Someday he will. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he died for the redemption of sinners. But he also died for the redemption of a cursed world. And one of these days, he's going to come back because he paid that price. And he's going to take it over once again. I, one writer that I read after, he said it like this. One day the shackles will fall off of all creation and creation will rejoice again. Isn't that good? Anybody got a comment? I kind of got wound up with preaching a little. Sorry about that.
And yet, yeah, and, and yet we're still walking in this flesh. We're still battling the flesh. And, and there are days that I've grown. There are days that I say, as John did, even so come Lord Jesus. I prayed that prayer often. I talk to other believers and they say, I'm like, John, I just want him to come back. Well, I hope you're ready and I hope your family's ready too. But I don't know when it's going to happen, but I believe it's going to happen a lot sooner than yesterday. <laughs> We're one day closer to the Lord's return. Uh, I, I'll go ahead and start this section, but we probably won't get all the way through it. Let's talk about the groaning of the believer, all right? Look at verse 23. He's talking about creation. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption that is the redemption of the body. I remember sitting in church when I was young. We went to church all the time. And hearing some preacher preach about this verse. The groaning of the believer in the body. I didn't understand it. I didn't comprehend it. But wait about 60 years. <laughs> you get out of a bed of a morning and sometimes as you're getting up, what do you hear? Oh, there's groaning in our bodies. All right. If you, if you get in the bathtub, and I don't recommend it past 65, all right? <laughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> it's hard to get out of there, all right? Uh, but that's not just exactly what he's talking about. He goes back to that whole understanding that this is a temporary place. And there are days... There are times, there are seasons in our lives. I like it that he mentions the first fruits of the Spirit. And he's referring to the indwelling Spirit, the ministry of the Spirit of God in our lives. And, and when he moved in the day we got saved, we can't get any more of him than we have within us. We just quench him sometimes and he can't do the work through us that, that we would like for him to do. So as the Spirit indwells us, and as we yield ourselves to the Spirit, uh, Paul put it this way, Christ lives in us, same thing as the Holy Spirit, all right? But we're still afflicted by the sins we commit. We're still afflicted by things that we didn't intend to say, things that we didn't intend to think, things we didn't intend to do. You know, we, we, we find ourselves, we, we live with regret at times. And so with that backdrop in mind, this battle, this struggle that goes on between the flesh and the spirit, and we've talked about it and talked about it in the book of Romans. And now he says that as they, speaking back to what he had just said, but we ourselves who even have the first fruits of the spirit, we groan in ourselves waiting for the adoption of children. I'm his. He has... I have as much of him as I'll ever get. I don't need any more of God, okay? And I'm telling you, folks, I don't rejoice in it like I want to. I don't rejoice in him like I want to. And living in this flesh and living with aging, feebleness, sickness, death, worry, fear, all of the things that, that, that we're belabored with in this life, there are days we get up and there are times and seasons in our life when we just pray, Lord, come get us. And there may be times when we lie awake in the loneliness of the solitude when it's just us and God or maybe our, our spouse or, or our best friend and we groan because this world ain't our home and, and, and we want it. Comments? I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to mark it in my notes lest I forget. Yes, we're going to talk about that next, next week. Thank you all for being here tonight. I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying Romans. It's taking longer than I ever thought it would. 
I don't know. We've been on Romans chapter 8 for several months. But it's, it's a good chapter in the Bible. Thank you again to all of you who joined us on Facebook Live. And uh, we hope you'll join us uh, Sunday morning. If you can't be here with us physically, we hope you can. But uh, our uh, Facebook Live video will begin at 11 o'clock. Include our Sunday morning worship and music and then the preaching time. All minds clear? All right, let me see if I can end this live video. Thank you all again for joining us.